Welcome to the next video concerning Microsoft Access. And today what we want to talk about is table relationships. How do you set them? How what do they mean? And and what do we why do we care? Okay. The first first off, just as a high overview, what a table relationship is, is how two tables um, relate to each other, such as um, if you have a transaction table, for example, what customer was it? So the transaction table would be concerned with the uh, primary key of the customer table, um, and it would have a foreign key in it of which customer ordered the products in the transaction table. So basically what you see is the the need for the tables to be connected together in something that resembles a some logic, okay? And, and what this process is called is data normalization. So what I wanna do is pop a database up here, for example, and I wanna show you an example of an unnormalized table for, and so as you open this table, what you see here is here's the payroll id those are the checks that they're going to do that's the primary key to this table now the primary key to this table says i want to play pay employee number one two three four and so on and that employee is this named person and that named person that person is also a marketing manager and this is the date of the payroll and that's the check number so forth and so on okay and, and the amount. This is kind of, this is basically a transaction table. But what's the problem with this transaction table? The transaction table has a lot of redundancy in it. If I were to sort this, you'd begin to see the redundancy. For example, Buchanan got two paychecks, number five and number 14. Uh, Devolio had two paychecks, number one and 10. Peacock and Leverling. They all had paychecks in here. And, and look at this also. A lot of these people were sales representatives. That data, this information is constantly repeated. Well, if you were to normalize this table, the you would have the, the employee ID as a foreign key to go look up the last name and first name of the employees. And then in the employee table, you would have a foreign key that would go look up the title and bring that data over. And when you queried it, then you'd say, well, I need to have the payroll table and the employee table and the title table to go link all of these together. In fact, if you went and looked at the payroll table, you'd see that it, when it's normalized, you'd have the payroll date, the check number, and the amount. Very simplistic. It's a list of the payroll that was paid to various people. So you see the employee ID, and then you see all the data. Next thing, when you go look at the employees table, you see a list, a succinct list of the employee. You see they didn't break down the titles here, so the titles are listed here. Um, and there are multiple people as, as sales representative. And, and really, that is a level of normalization that you can decide to go to or not. Sometimes you you don't want to go to that because it's just a single field. I'll go ahead and just leave the title in with the person's name and uh, keep it that way. And then this tells, you know, where they're living and what region of, of the country or world that they're living in, um, in the USA or the UK and so forth and so on. Okay. So the normalized employee table then looks like that. So we go from an unnormalized table that had redundancy in the first name last name and title of the employees and you boil it down to simply a uh, a table that has the employee id the date the check number and the amount and that's what normalization is now your first normal form and uh, let's quickly review the normal forms here first normal form is um, if you had a table for example here and you decided that this person had this check number and Buchanan also had this check number and decided to put this check number and this check number in the same field in the same record so you decided to separate them by a semicolon 
uh, that would not be in first normal form. First normal form means you get rid of the get rid of the multiple entries within one field. Second normal form then basically says I want to get rid of the redundancies between records. So that while this is within a record getting the redundancy out in a particular field, the second level is to get rid of record to record redundancy so Buchanan doesn't appear twice in the, the particular table. Now, that employee ID might fit be here twice, and of course that would be normal because that employee hopefully will get more than one paycheck. Um, at least I hope to get more than one paycheck when I work for an employer. The third normal form then says don't, don't put any calculations in the table. So for example, the final check amount was listed here. But if I had a situation where the this particular payroll had um, pulled the rate that this person gets paid and then mul and put number of hours in that particular table and then went ahead and stored the rate times the hours to get the check amount and then also possibly took all the deductions and, and put them all on the table and then stored the final result. That would not be appropriate. That would not be in third normal form because you don't actually store the calculations. You, what you do is you just store the um, the raw data and let a query then uh, build the uh, actual data up as um, as you pull the data. So what I want to do is go ahead and close these because I want to show you the next thing, which is between the tables. A lot of times, what you'll want is uh, to, for data integrity to be enforced. So let's say you have a table and there's a there's one, the one side of the table is, is the table with the ID in it, the primary key in it. And you want to link over to a table um, that has a foreign key in it. Um, the side with the one, let's say you want to make sure it never gets deleted as long as it has a field in the many side that needs the one side. So what you do is, is if you have to have that relationship uh, continue to be enforced, you do what they call enforcing referential integrity. So if we look at the database tools and go look at the relationships for this database, what we see is that there are a lot of, um, a lot of tables that already have the um, relationships set up for this particular uh, database schema. So what you see here is customer contacts having a relationship with table customers. So the customer contacts, the primary key to that field is this ID field. The customer ID is a foreign key field and the primary key, it links to the primary key field of table customers. Now, the relationship here is a one here to many with referential integrity enforced. Now, the, the way I know that is because it won't have the one and Google here or the infinity sign here unless it has referential integrity enforced. When you're first setting these up, you see the first bo dialog box you see is this dialog box here. Where you ask, where it asks you which relationship needs to apply, and at this point in time, they're saying that only only include roles where the joint fields from both tables are equal. Okay, so both tables equal, and I'll get to the other two options here in a moment. What they want to do at that, that point then is enforce referential integrity. Now they decided not to do cascade update related fields or cascade delete related fields, meaning that when a form enters one of the two sides, the customer ID on one side or the uh, or the other, that it either deletes or updates depending on uh, which side that was. So that makes sure that they stay equal at all times. But enforcing referential integrity means that if there is an entry in this table customers table that relies on customer ID to be available, then that customer ID cannot be deleted. 
So when you enforce referential integrity, it just means that the references maintain their integrity throughout all time. So the next thing you see here is you see the one to many here, but you see a different variation of that here with a, an arrow point here. Now what they've done in this case is they're enforcing referential integrity, yes. The, when we edit the relationship and look at the join type, notice it's not the first one that's checked where both are equal on either side. The, the point here is that they want to include all records from table customers, but only the records in table sales where the join fields equal. So in other words, if you don't have a table sales record for a particular customer, the customer will still show up, but it will show up without orders. If we left it to be the number one up here, where we had to have only the, what is equal on both sides of it, what would happen is it would drop all records that didn't have a sale. So you lose visibility of the customers that didn't have a sale. Now coming down here, we can do it from the opposite st standpoint. Um, if there's a sales record, show the customer. But if, if there's a sales record that doesn't have a customer, which of course is impossible because we're enforcing referential integrity in this case, um, but it would be the opposite in this particular case where if there's a sales record without a customer, it still would show the sale but it would show that there was no customer for the sale, which doesn't really make sense. That's why number two is checked in this case. Okay, so that's another one-to-many relationship. So here you've got uh, an outer join here. What they call these, by the way, is they call them left outer joins or right outer joins. So this one is a right outer join, meaning that everything shows here and it outer joins to this where only those equal. And this one over here, the salesperson, is a left outer join, meaning every salesperson is going to show, and only those people in the table sales table where they um, have a sale. So that's kind of the overview of inner and outer joins. Inner joins are these type of joins where just equal to equal. R outer join was all here, but only those that match here, or all here, then only those that match here. So you have a left and a right variety of inner and out of the outer joins. And then you have uh, the different join um, types where you're enforcing the referential integrity here. Now you can have the same database schema and decide not to enforce referential integrity here. And there are reasons to do that um, at other times. So, please uh, remember to subscribe to the channel. You'll hear when the next video comes out. And thank you. Talk to you later.